Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com. Today, as we continue talking about advanced masking techniques, we are going to do some pattern overlays. So here we're going to take the robot that we used in previous videos and add sort of a pattern stencil on top. And we're going to use masks to do this. So to build these patterns, I'm just going to start with some basic shapes. Modify them a little bit. And then just use some repetition to make them interesting. And honestly, the way that I made those 2D graphics is not that important. You can make them any way you want. Maybe you're even just grabbing images off of Google Image Search. The important part, though, is that I've got these 2D decals that are ready to be put onto my image. And what I'm really using them for is shape. So I'm just going to copy these and put them right inside of the primary mask. Now, if you look at the bottom of the post, I've linked to a video on how to do this warping in order to make them fit onto the model correctly. So if this is unfamiliar to you using the warp tool, go ahead and watch that video, and then it'll make a little more sense. But I'm just taking this 2D shape and making it conform to the nice contours of this shape. And I want to do a little bit of repetition here, so I'm going to repeat these shapes around the form a bit. So here what I'm doing is I'm sort of optimizing my time. I spent a little time making these details at first, and now I can sort of save time by moving them around the model and using repetition to my advantage. So I'm going to take this other one here, put it inside the model. and see where that might look interesting. And if you're doing a variety of characters that are all sort of from the same set, you could maybe build up a collection of these design language pieces and then use them on all your different characters. And it would add a bit of sort of continuity as you worked. And because each of these are on their own layer, I can sort of modify them as I work and see how the overall design is looking. And it's also important to remember here that this black is not going to be the final look. All I'm thinking about here is shape, because the next step is going to take these shapes and to use them as a template. So once I'm happy with the layout of these different shapes, I'm going to go ahead and make them all a single layer. Now that all my patterning is on a single layer, I can use that to build a selection. And this is where the selection building comes into play. So I control click on that layer thumbnail to generate a selection. So this just draws the marching ants around anywhere where that patterning is. Now I'm going to make a layer group and create a mask. So now I can actually hide the original patterning. This is just to use as a temporary step. Now anything I paint inside of that layer group is going to be inside the pattern shape. So if I were painting blue paint in here, it's only going to be where those patterns were. So here I've sort of made a big stencil for my character, and then I can paint whatever I want inside of it. And what you do next with this is totally up to you. What this did was it gave me the ability to make an incredibly complicated selection without too much trouble. I sort of built the selection. But now that I've got it, I can paint whatever I want in here. So maybe I'm going to call this sort of a different material, and it's going to be more reflective than the other material. Well, that's easy, because I can't paint outside of the lines. Because there's this big stencil on here, I only have to worry about what's being painted into the patterned areas. So this could give you a lot of really interesting results. It makes for very efficient painting, and you don't really have to worry about going outside of the lines. And because you can make a bunch of different layers inside of here, you can try out different effects, because they're all going to be affected by that large layer mask. So everything you paint will be where the patterns are and nowhere else. But I encourage you to give this a try. If you start with basic 2D shapes, put them onto your form and warp them into place, 
and then smash them all down onto one layer, you've got yourself an awesome layer selection. And if you put that on a group as a mask, you can have some really interesting painting results. So once again, this is one of those techniques that is a bit more advanced, and it's a little abstract if you're used to thinking in traditional painting terms. But if you're going to use Photoshop, you may as well use it to its full advantage. So think about painting with masks. Good luck, and thanks for coming to ControlPaint.com.